cat on my lap. This is the weirdest show ever. It really is. <laughs> Did you guys see that? She just totally fell. Can you lay down, goofball? Oh. And I can't hear. Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Today is Wednesday. It's July 7th, 2021. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. Well, how was your Tuesday? I had a pretty good Tuesday. Um, had two cancellations last minute. One was the doctor's appointment because the, apparently the phlebotomist was away this week and nobody knew that until last night. I don't know. Uh, and then the second was uh, the podcast I was going to record five minutes beforehand. Now, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to take a little more time with this than I normally would because I want to make sure that you guys don't think I'm a jerk. The podcast, we were supposed to start at nine. Nine? No, ten. I think it was ten. Anyway, whatever time it was. And I went back to the email thread where we figured this out, the when and everything. And it looked like I was expecting a link to jump on. And I, so it's like seven minutes beforehand and I sent an email and said, hey, am I, am I missing a, a link? How, how are we doing this? And I very quickly got an email back. Sorry, I was in the ER with my father all night. Hope to reschedule soon. Now, obviously, family comes first. Someone being in the ER is a big deal. I get that. But I feel like if you're able to respond that quickly when I email you, probably could have emailed me. I don't know, maybe I'm just built differently than other people. If I was in the ER with family and knew that the next day was gonna be a disaster, at some point while I'm sitting there, I'm gonna pick up my phone, I'm gonna look at my calendar and say, okay, who do I need to let know about what's going on? Other family, maybe friends, maybe somebody needs to come look at, take look in on the cat. And what about all of my professional contacts that need that I need to let know what's going on as quickly as I can so we can reschedule? Maybe I'm just built differently. No, I'll reschedule. But I just I just found it disappointing. And maybe it's because I have an issue with people canceling and no showing. It, it, there's something about it that really gets to me. And it goes back to being a kid and getting bullied and picked on. There are very few people who in this world who can say, I didn't show up, I did, that I canceled. Maybe I'm late once in a while. But if I tell you I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be there, even if I don't wanna be there. Even if I wanted to be there and then things changed and I didn't want to be there, I'm still gonna go. Because I know, here's a good example. Um, I've been invited to sit in on a black belt testing on Friday. Sure. I don't know anybody testing. I know this, the school owner. And I found out yesterday, it conflicts with, uh, I call him my nephew, he's really not. There's not a blood relation, but a family that I've known for a long time and I'm close with them. I was, I was in the hospital. I don't know if I held him day one. I don't think I did. Cause like brand new babies terrify me. 
But anyways, I was in the <laughs> delivery room not long after he was born. I've known him forever. He's turning 15. His party's at the same time. But where am I going? I'm going to the testing. Not because it's better professionally. Not because I want to do it more. But because I said I would. That's just how I'm built. What else happened yesterday? <sighs> Worked on the flexibility program and, and uh, finally dialed in one of the things that I was struggling with. One of the things I didn't like was the definition for flexibility. The one I pulled out of, out of the dictionary just, ugh, it was, it was boring. So instead, I took three definitions and I, kind of, I, I didn't combine them, but I put them together in a couple paragraphs. And this is something that I think is, this is a good illustration of something that I do often personally and, well, not so much personally, but professionally. If there's a problem, if you're, if you're struggling with a problem and you're looking at it from different angles, eventually you're going to find a way. Eventually you're going to find a solution. So don't stop looking at it in different ways. I had been stuck on, I don't like this definition. Maybe I should make my own. Let's look at other definitions. And it came to me yesterday. Oh, let's just, let's talk about the fact that I don't like any of these definitions and what I do like and what I don't like about them. And ultimately, as I wrote that down, it led me to sort of my own definition. Frank says, good morning all. Good morning, Frank. Hope you are well, my friend. I wrote Frank a marathon email last night, well, yesterday afternoon. I don't know if he's read it yet. It doesn't matter whether he has or not, but as I was writing it, I felt a little bad for you because um, I just kept going. <laughs> what some of you may not know is that, uh, good morning, Stacy. When, I, when I'm trying to work through something, I have a couple different bits to my process. And one of them is getting up from my desk and walking around and kind of talking out loud and pacing. Uh, any of my cl any clients that do consulting work with me know that if we're trying to talk things out, I am not sitting. I am walking around. I can't. I, it would be interesting to find a way to quantify creative thought and score me being creative sitting and me being creative pacing. I do, excuse me, analytical work better when I'm sitting, but creative work, I need movement. And so I'd write some of this email and I'd get up and I'd walk around and think about it. Okay, and what about this part? What about this part? And then I'd go back and I'd write some more. And then I <laughs> did that probably two or three times. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Anything else happened yesterday? I went to the gym. Flexibility book. I'm so behind on email. I owe so many of you email. I really do. It's, it's, I think, I think I might have to have a, a Panera session, which for those of you who watched this show pre-COVID know that that was where I would go at the end of the day when I was fried I would take that break, drive over to Panera, do a bunch of email, and then usually go to the gym. And it sucks because Panera's in the wrong direction, but I have a good excuse. I went to buy cat food yesterday for that, that thing over there and forgot my wallet. I pulled into the parking lot. I was like, ah, the wallet's at home. So Panera and the cat in the pet food store right nearby. So I'll probably do that. What's going on today? I'm going to try to get through more of the, the flexibility book. There are a handful of things I still have to finish. Very, I don't know, say very small, but small-ish. Um, what else? She gets acupuncture. Client call. I put out a pretty extensive, those of you who are in Patreon, you've probably gotten used to a, a sort of a format with the behind the scenes updates. And they're, you know, it's, they're usually kind of, kind of dry. 
here are the podcast episodes that are coming. Sometimes I'll sprinkle some other stuff in. <laughs> Frank says, at the store I work at, we sell cat food per can. <laughs> oh, Frank, that's a good one. Um, lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Cat. I don't know. I lost it. Oh, p Patreon update. Uh, yesterday I just, I went pretty extensive with it. I gave you like the next 10 or 12 podcast episodes. I talked about a handful of other things. If you're, if you're not in Patreon, even, um, so those behind the scenes updates, uh, those are in every tier. So you can get in for $2 and get some stickers and find out what's going on behind the scenes, support the show. You know. One of the things I was thinking about yesterday is how do we figure out what we can do to make, get, to make the Patreon more valuable to people. So here's my request. If you're watching this show, you are probably, maybe or maybe not, a super fan of Whistlekick, but you're at least a fan. You like Whistlekick, you appreciate what we do, etc. What, for those of you who don't contribute to the Patreon, and you don't have to, I'm not trying to browbeat you, why not? Is there, is there something, are you willing to tell me? Because if you're willing to tell me, Maybe we can do something to make it more valuable. Now, of course, if the answer is, I don't have any money, or I support the show in other ways, or it just doesn't line up for, it's just not something I want to do, totally fine. It's nothing I'm gonna, I can do to overcome that. And if you do, if you are willing to email me, jeremy at whistlecake.com, and tell me, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna browbeat you. I'm not gonna guilt you. I'm not gonna try to change your mind. I'm genuinely just looking for information at this point. It's my hope that people will share things with me that I haven't thought of, and I'll say, ah, what if we add this to the Patreon? What if we add this to the Patreon? Right now I'm really looking at the Patreon. There are some other things that I'm considering implementing on top of the Patreon that would extend value. Um, we can't quite do them yet but hopefully we'll, we will be able to do them soon. <sighs> Anything else going on today? I don't think so. Finished watching the first Hobbit movie last night. We'll probably watch the second one tonight. I posted something on Facebook here. I'll, I'll say this and then I'll, I'll read the, the comments. Because there's two ways to look at this, what, what happened. I posted on Facebook, hey, with respect to the Lord of the Rings movies and the Hobbit movies, should you, which order should you watch them? Because if, if you know the stories, you know that the Hobbit is the first of the four books in the Lord of the Rings series. So it, it's kind of odd, in a sense, that the Lord of the Rings movies came out, Fellowship of the Ring, Return, uh, Two Towers, Return of the King, that trilogy came out, and then years later they did the first book as its own trilogy, which by the way, it should have been two books, three books was too many. Or, I'm sorry, three, should have been two movies, three movies split it up too much. And I had a, I was hoping to get some discussion of the actual order, like you should watch it in this order because, or that order because. And I got a lot of people saying, you shouldn't watch the Hobbit movies, are And I just... <sighs> it's not what I was looking for. Clearly that wasn't the question. But we are at this odd time where everyone feels that they're... That if you ask for their advice on something, that it's free... It, it opens the door to provide any sort of criticism or advice, even mildly relevant to the subject possible. If I was to say, so here's another good example. If I was to post publicly, um, let's say I posted a form. I posted a video of me doing a form, any form, Pinyon Shodan. 
Taikyoko Shodam. Chongji. I'm out of names for Heian Shodan for the first form that I know in different systems. And I said, I could ask a very specific question. Does my, does it look like my back foot is in the correct position? I would get some people who would answer that, but a large number of people would criticize anything and everything else. Your punches don't look right. Your blocks are wrong. That's not how you do it. That's not how we do it. Martial arts is stupid. You're stupid. Taekwondo is stupid, right? We would get a lot of that. And we get a lot of that even if we don't ask. So my, my thought to you My thin's my my thin my skin is getting quite a bit thicker. This stuff it doesn't bother me nearly as much as it used to. But consider that it may bother other people. If someone asks for advice or help, recognize that they are probably feeling very vulnerable, maybe even inadequate in asking for that advice. And to pile on to attack them. Probably doesn't help. Here, here's a, another personal anecdote. Where's the tablet? Um, years ago, before I knew better, I posted something on social media, on Facebook, which at the time, I mean, this was, I think this, this was either just at the beginning of martial arts radio or even before. So nearly everyone on my Facebook friends list was someone I knew. That is not the case now. I have plenty of people that I don't know personally. And I posted something. I was feeling very lonely at the time. I was fe feeling um, very defeated in the realm of dating and relationships. And I posted a question, you know, kind of outlining the way I looked at it. And, and the short of it was like, you know, when I, when, I, when I read, when I ask women questions, when I try to understand what it is women are looking for, it seems like I check a lot of the boxes. Why am I having such a hard time? And I, I got some sympathetic responses. I got some, good morning, Francis. I got some, some supportive responses. But I also had other responses to the effect of, how can you assume that all women want these things? Like, just piling on. And it, it's been years, and that's stuck with me, not, not because of the specifics of, of the subject, but because it seemed so obvious to me that I was having a hard time. And really the heart of what I was looking for was some support and some sympathy. And what I got was some of that, but plenty of not. I even remember one person. It, it, the, the way this person responded, it changed my opinion of this person. It was overly harsh. And if this person was not married to somebody else, and that person was not woven into a group of people that I am, uh, I, that is important to me, would have unfriended both of them years ago. Let's see what y'all gave me to talk about. What's going on in here in YouTube land? If you have questions, comments, feedback. Drop it in the comment section below. Frank says, sometimes people need a sounding board. Absolutely. That's what I used to use Facebook for. I don't do that anymore. I go specifically to people. I can't do it publicly anymore for anything of, of real substance because people can't handle that. Um, so we got some stuff here from Frank and from Jen. Jen says, for raised beds, we were talking about gardening yesterday. Do you have anywhere locally that you can access even broken pallets? Those can be disassembled or just cut up and made into raised beds. Pretty simply, if you can find them, not sure about your area, but here often feed stores, warehouses, even department stores will give them away. That is a great idea. And the sheer number of, I did the math. I need somewhere on the order of just for a single row, like 500 feet of boards to grab pallets 
would be helpful. Now, the, the bummer is that I don't have a pickup, but I bet I could make it work. So thank you, Jen. Great suggestion. I don't know what it's like uh, up in the Pacific Northwest, but here, people have no problem grabbing pallets and burning them. Oh, Stacy says she just got her hop kick book yesterday. Looking forward to checking it out this weekend. Oh, nice. I hope you enjoy it. It's a great story. Those of you who haven't read The Origins of Master Hopkick, thinking that, oh, it's a kid's book, I'm not gonna like it, you're missing out. It's a great story. If you have a martial arts school and you do mat chats, it is not, I don't, this wasn't really the intention, but it is, each chapter is roughly the length that you would want, and it brings up enough stuff that there's more than enough to talk about. So think about that. And from Frank. On this day in 1921, boxer Ezard Charles was born. In the ring, he also went by the Cincinnati Cobra. Here are some interesting facts about him I found online. He was elected to the International Boxing Hall of Fame in 1990. In 1976, Cincinnati honored Charles by changing the name of Lincoln Park Drive to Ezard Charles Drive. This was the street of his residence during the height of his career. I find old boxers fascinating. You go back, you look at I mean, some of those guys would take multiple fights in a night. Uh, boxing gloves weren't nearly what they are today. And if, if you look at, if you've ever, all right, here's something a lot of people don't realize. People assume, most people that don't box assume that boxing gloves are for the protection of the person getting punched in the face. It's not, it's for the protection of your hands. Getting punched in the face with a boxing glove still hurts. But if you punch somebody in the face with your bare hands a bunch of times, you're probably gonna break your hand. Why? Because this whole part of your head is pretty much one piece. It's really solid. It hurts when you punch it. Which is why I don't understand why so many people are so convinced that their hands, that they've never put onto breaking boards or concrete are gonna be effective punching somebody in the face with a closed fist. It's the number one reason to break boards. To get used to hitting things that are hard. So if you do choose to hit somebody in the head, at the very, maybe you'll still break your hand, but at least you won't go, oh my God, I can't, I can't believe that did, I can't believe that happened. Why did I just go to a weird voice? DC says, I'm in good shape then, yes you are. Stacy, you and Laura, have you ever considered doing like your own version of Gallagher? That could be fun. And the way the the way lumber prices are right now, it might be cheaper. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I would enjoy watching that. Um, he was so back to the, these facts about Ezra Charles. He was a quiet, modest individual. I think most of the old-timey fighters. Now, you know what? I can't say that because I don't know enough about them. I want to say, my instinct is that the best fighters are, are quiet and... Well, Francis says, I have a fascination for old-time boxing history. You and Frank should chat. Uh, Frank seems to have an affinity for old boxers as well. It's, it's, it's such an interesting thing to me. You know, if you look at just combat sports in general and, and the, the dichotomy in society, on, on the one hand, we, we love watching the violence. We love watching them. And we elevate them to the point where some of them their ego runs away with them. Conor McGregor, Muhammad Ali, oh, who's somebody else? Yeah, that's enough examples. And yet, a lot of us don't think highly of them as people. And we'll, despite wanting to watch them beat on people in the ring, we don't treat them so well out of the ring. 
Mike Tyson. Look at his history. And of course, we're adjacent to this as martial artists. I've been spending more and more time on TikTok and, and it inspired, I sent Andrew an email yesterday about an episode that I want to do. Martial arts is not fighting. Doesn't mean it doesn't contain elements. Doesn't mean it's not inspired or rooted in, but they're not the same. People confuse them. They think those terms are the same. They're not. And when I look at the majority of martial arts content on TikTok, it's on that subject. If you want to stop a fight, do this. If you want to win a fight, do this. Here are the martial arts that don't win in a fight. And it's just, ugh, it's so gross. It really is. I, I just, I'm disappointed. Now, of course, it creates controversy, and controversy is, is what gets views. I don't know, man. I don't know. What else about Ezra Charles? Come on, tablet. Here we go. At the end of career, he, his record was 89 wins, 25 losses, and one draw. I wonder if that one draw bothered him. On Ezard Charles Drive in Cincinnati, there's a place called Laurel Park. On October 9th, 2021, the new Ezard Charles statue will be dedicated at the third annual Ezfest. Oh, that's cool. Now, Frank, I know you're somewhat near there. Um, is, is Ezard Charles a, uh, a known figure? Is he a local hero out there? Um, I'm trying to think. We don't really have anyone like that. We talk about Ethan Allen a little bit here in Vermont. Um, Joseph Smith, founder of, of uh, the Mormon faith is from Vermont, so we, we kind of have a mixed relationship about him here. Uh, Frank says, yes, he is. Okay, interesting. I, I like that. I like when an area can kind of get together and celebrate someone who achieved things. Uh, we've had plenty of people, you know, go really far with, uh, let's say, winter sports out of Vermont. In fact, it wasn't the last Winter Olympics, but the one before. I, I did the math. Per capita, Vermont won more medals than any country. We, in fact, not even per capita, we won more medals than most countries. Because it's Vermont, and we do these things. We ski, and we snowboard, and we cross-country ski. Yeah. And so to wrap it up, don't be afraid of celebrating the people around you. One of the things that I don't see happen often enough in martial arts schools is the celebration of what people do outside. Whether it's martial arts related, like going to a competition, or whether it's not, like a promotion good grades and a report card, buying a new home, whatever it is, retiring. If you're a martial arts school owner, or at all involved in the financial success of a martial arts school, the number one thing you can do is create culture, and a positive culture, and one where people are there not just to train, but to be around people that they enjoy. And if, the more you can foster that, the better retention will be. We, we've seen this time and again in, in not only martial arts schools, but other uh, adult extracurriculars. And it trickles down, it trickles down to the, the kids side of things. So keep that in mind. And if you are a student and you're looking to try and have a positive impact on that culture, invite the class out for drinks. Hey, everybody. Uh, and, and most schools would be fine with this. So class ends, people are changing. 
hey, everybody, uh, you know, grab two or three people and, and invite them personally. Hey, you want to go grab a drink? You want to go grab a drink? Hey, everybody, so-and-so and so-and-so and I are going to go grab a drink. You're all welcome to join us. And then descend on that restaurant or bar and go and just get to know everyone outside of training or as I always chuckled at growing up, in clothes. I didn't recognize you in clothes. All right. I hope you have a great day. Uh, that's, that's it. Leave me some stuff for tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Subscribe, comment, like, all that stuff. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Take care.